When I first started taking pictures of the planets, I noticed there was some red and blue fringes around the edge of the planet. Fortunately, this wasn't any chromatic aberration, but an aberration known as atmospheric dispersion. And to fix this, I had to use a device known as an atmospheric dispersion corrector. So after doing some searching, I decided to purchase the atmospheric dispersion corrector from ZWO, as I heard it had some good reviews. And I was pretty eager and excited to use this new product. But I have to be completely honest with you, I had no idea how it works. How does it, um, how does it work? I know not, my liege. Consult the Book of Armaments! So, I tried taking Arthur's advice, but I had another problem. Ayo, hey, where's my book of arm? That's right. For whatever reason, the package does not include any instructions whatsoever, which was pretty bizarre. So after doing additional research on the internet, reading several different articles, and watching a pretty good presentation on this, I finally figured it out. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the ZWO Atmospheric Dispersion Corrector to help you get the best results out of your solar system observing and imaging. My name is Kwesi Akwa, and welcome to the Astro Park. Before we can even use an atmospheric dispersion corrector, which I'll just refer to as an ADC, we have to ask ourselves a pretty important question. What is atmospheric dispersion? Think about a traditional prism. When light enters the prism, the light gets dispersed into its individual colors on the visible spectrum from the red end all the way down to the blue end. The same thing is happening in our atmosphere as the molecules of air act like individual miniature prisms. For example, during sunrise and sunset, the sun has a red-orange color. This is because the sunlight is passing through a thick layer of atmosphere on the horizon, and the atmospheric dispersion is more pronounced. Whereas if the sun is high in the sky during noontime, the sunlight is passing through a thinner layer of atmosphere, and the atmospheric dispersion is less pronounced. Let's look at another example of two images that I took of Jupiter recently. The first image is what I took this past August. Although it looks pretty good, if you look closely at the planet, you'll notice some red fringing on the edge right here and some blue fringing right here. This is due to the effects of the atmospheric dispersion. And if we look to the second photo that I took in September, by properly using the ADC, the atmospheric dispersion has been reduced significantly, allowing the planet to have very good sharpness and high contrast to bring out additional details. Now that we know what atmospheric dispersion is, let's see how using an ADC can eliminate those aberrations. 
So let's start by looking at the actual mechanics of the ADC. At first glance, it kind of looks like a Barlow lens, but with a few added accessories. So your eyepiece or your camera sensor will go right here, and the other end goes to the back of your telescope. There's also a rotating ring right here with a bubble level, and you can move it around by loosening the set screw and moving it accordingly. But the main part are these two levers, and each lever is on its own dedicated channel, and the levers are attached to prisms on the inside of the ADC. And these prisms work together to reduce the effects of the atmospheric dispersion. So all of the wavelengths of light from the red end of the spectrum to the blue end of the spectrum will all converge at the same point, giving you a very sharp, high contrast image of your planet. So next, let's figure out how to set up the ADC for observing or imaging. The first thing we have to do is set up what's known as the zero correction level. We do that by focusing on the two channels that the levers travel across. So right here and right here. We then find where these two channels overlap, somewhere in the middle here. And once we find that overlap, we then find the midpoint of the overlap, which is where the levers are right here. And you can use the tick marks on your ring as a reference point for that midpoint. So once we have that set up, this is known as the zero position. So we can put our eyepiece or camera right here, and the other end goes to the back of the telescope. So once we've placed the ADC assembly into the telescope, the next step is to make sure that the levers set at the zero position are lined up with your local horizon line. And the levers have to be facing towards the right. Now, depending on when you first bought your ADC, the earlier models of these required the levers to be facing towards the left. So to determine which way your levers need to be facing, you can start by taking the ADC in your hand, hold it out at arm's length, and use a local horizon line as a reference. This can be a line drawn on your computer monitor, a line drawn on a piece of paper, or a flat surface that has a defined horizon. You then want to spread the levers at equal distances and you want to see that local horizon line going downwards. If it's going downwards, that means you have the levers facing in the correct position. So once you figure out which way your levers need to be facing, we can then begin the atmospheric dispersion correction. To start the correction, Begin by moving the levers at equal distances apart from each other. You can use the hash marks on the ring mechanism as a reference. As you do this, you'll notice that the planet will move around a little bit on the screen. So just be sure to recenter the planet on the screen after every correction. You'll notice as you go through this, the planet will have a higher sharpness as well as a higher contrast. When you've reached a point of maximum sharpness and contrast, this will be your maximum correction level and then you can secure this with the ring mechanism and the bubble level.
and now you have achieved maximum dispersion correction. There's a couple of things you need to remember when it comes to achieving your maximum correction. If you go past the maximum correction, you'll now be over correcting. So the atmospheric dispersion fringes will appear on opposite sides. So if you had red fringing on the left and blue fringing on the right, once you overcorrect, the blue will now appear on the left and the red will appear on the right. So that's something you need to keep in mind. And also these two levers have a maximum travel distance on their channels. So if you've reached this point and you still haven't achieved maximum correction, then you need to adjust the distance between your camera sensor and the ADC. And dispersion correction can occur at any angle. It's just a matter of how your imaging train is configured as well as the altitude of the planet in the sky. So as your imaging session progresses, you might notice that the ADC in the back looks something like this, as it's no longer lined up with the horizon anymore. This is because the telescope moves and tracks the planet across the sky. And in this configuration, atmospheric dispersion has been reintroduced. So to simply correct for this, since we already have our maximum correction set up, we can simply move the levers up a notch. And you want to make sure that you do this at equal distances. So once that's been set up, we can then re-secure the ring with the bubble level. And you're all set for another round of imaging. So just like you're focusing, you want to check for atmospheric dispersion as well. You want to do your checks around every 20 to 30 minutes or so. Fire capture also has a pretty useful tool known as the ADC correction tool. It's the symbol with the red, blue, and green circles right over here. You simply click on that and it will display a graph that looks something like this, where it has a red circle and a blue circle. When you do your corrections, the red circle and the blue circle will start to overlap with each other, creating a white circle. As I mentioned before, when you're doing the correction, the planet will start to move around the screen. So you simply want to recenter it by placing those circles in the center crosshair. As you get closer to maximum dispersion, the two red and blue circles will overlap with each other to create a white circle and then you will know that you've achieved your maximum dispersion. So now I'll show how to put together the imaging train. If you're using the telescope at its native focal length, just basically take the ADC, place your camera or your eyepiece in the back, and the other end goes to the back of the telescope. Now, if you're using a Barlow lens, it's recommended that the ADC goes in between the camera and the Barlow lens. So this end goes into the back of your telescope and you're all set to go. So that's how to use the Atmospheric Dispersion Corrector from ZWO. And I hope it helps you to enhance your 
solar system observing and imaging. I'd like to give a big shout out to Mr. Agapios Elia, as I learned how to use the ZWO ADC from him. Agapios is a planetary astrophotographer living in Cyprus, and he's taken some fantastic images. I've placed a link to his website in the description box down below if you're interested in checking him out. So thank you for watching Astropark and until next time, take care and I wish you all clear skies.